Howdy, I'm Dr. J, and this is the American West. Sadly, our history is going away, and with it go all the people and all the memories. And you know what? Today is the day that you and I get to rescue history. So come on, let's go, let's take a walk. Welcome to Walking the American West with Dr. J. Preserving the history of the Western frontier and sharing the memories and events that shaped America. Today I'm standing in front of the world famous OK Corral right here in Tombstone, Arizona. Have you ever wondered how there could be so many versions of, of a single event as there are of this one? I know I have. So today, let's explore the truth about the truth about the gunfight at the OK Corral, or as I like to call it, the lowdown on the throwdown. Of all the incidents that took place as part of our old West history, I think you'll agree, none have been scrutinized more than this one. Just when you think there's no more to say about it, here comes another book. And someone's going to say something about it. When it comes to the gunfight at the OK Corral, believe it or not, there are some things that people will agree on. For instance, the gunfight at the OK Corral did not take place at the OK Corral. In fact, it should have been called, are you ready? <gasps> The gunfight on Fremont Street that erupted in the vacant lot between Fly's Boarding House and the Harwood House near the intersection of 3rd and Fremont, about 100 feet west of the rear entrance of the OK Corral. Now that's a long movie title. OK, back to what we know. We know the date of the gunfight, October 26, 1881. We know the names of some of the participants, and we know who was shot, who was wounded, who was killed, who ran away, and who walked away without a scratch. Now, what we can't know for sure is the exact time the gunfight took place, the exact number of participants, the exact number of shots fired, the exact make, model, caliber, and serial numbers of the guns used. And by the way, whatever happened to them guns, they're gone. We don't even know for sure why that first shot was even fired. And here's what I do know. Once that first shot was fired, it was bedlam. With as many different versions of what went down as there were eyewitnesses on that busy, snowy street that afternoon in October. Although locally, this gun fight was a pretty big deal when it happened. For the rest of the country, eh, not so much. In fact, for most of our grandparents and parents, their very first exposure to any of this would have been at the movies. Hit the third. With the release of the movie Gunfight at the OK Corral in 1957, a whole generation of baby boomers would grow up glued to that TV after school wanting to be part of the romance of the Old West. Now, how do I know this? <laughs> I was one of them. And when I was eight years old, I had me a Red Rider BB gun, and I did not shoot my eye out. <laughs> oh my God, I shot my eye out. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. And what about Wyatt Earp? He's gone, or he should be. Well, he was there. Were you there? Well, surely he told someone about, did you tell someone about this? Well, it turns out he did. You see, later in life, several authors did in fact interview Wyatt Earp, and something you may not know about Wyatt here is that he was quite the prankster. And behind them steely blues lurked a whimsical sense of humor. And to spice things up a little bit, he just might have, might have, mind you, embellished his version of the gunfight for effect. Hey, hey, I'm just saying. 
Well, let's just say you can't believe everything you read. And don't forget, Tombstone, at the time of this gunfight, was a quagmire of political and financial corruption with two competing newspapers that oftentimes would print different versions of this same event. And oh, let's not forget that self-serving, crooked county sheriff who kept changing his version of the story to suit his political future. Really? Oh yes, and then there's this. Stories passed down through the generations do have a way of being altered to suit the style of the storyteller. Just think of some trivial incident that took place years ago as part of one of your family reunions and how it's just blown up and taken on a life of its own. So you can see the problem. Although researchers had a vast quantity of research material to go to, that which wasn't destroyed as part of the two fires, and yes, even an earthquake, <coughs> was, was either inadvertently altered or even made up. <coughs> so what have we learned? We've learned that every historic event can have many different versions. We've learned about some of the things that may have contributed to why this particular event has so many different versions. <laughs> and hopefully, we've been reminded a little bit about human nature. As to the truth about the truth about the gunfight at the OK Corral, how about this? Despite what you and I believe, Two facts remain. Five minutes after the event, the legend began. And myth beats reality every single time. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Just up the street from where I'm standing right now is the world famous Birdcage Theater. And sitting at a poker table downstairs right this minute, is the subject of my next video. See if you can figure out who it is. You're a daisy if you do. Thanks for walking with me. Come on, Boots, let's keep walking.